Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn, and today we're going to talk about nutrient dynamics on the rhizosphere and how equilibrium chemistry affects plant nutrient uptake. All right, so this lecture is uh, part of the SWAE 6403 course, Advanced Topics in Soil Plant Environment. And uh, we're going to talk about equilibrium chemistry and the dynamics of nutrients on the rhizosphere, considering all its complexity, yeah? considering all its, com its complexity. This is a complementary lecture for the other one on the course SWAE 4401. Uh, but now we're going to go a little bit deeper since it's a, a postgraduate course. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit how to understand this complexity of the rhizosphere. So, last lecture we were talking about the uh, soil water and a little bit how water in itself is a growth factor. Um, but uh, besides being a growth factor, water is a vehicle for nutrients. And root is uptaking nutrients from the soil solution. And the soil solution is uh, interfacing the nutrients that are absorbed into the solid phase. Okay? So we are interested in the soil water both as a uh, growth factor by itself, but also as how it, is, it affects this dynamic between what is stored on the solid phase and how it is transferred towards the root system. Yeah? For the plants to uptake, the nutrients has to be on the soil solution as in, in the ionic form, in ionic form. So this is a figure that exemplifies the rhizosphere again. So we have, the, let's say, the solid phase here and the root on this side root is taking up the nutrients. Yeah? The root is taking up the nutrients. As it takes up the nutrients, the concentration here is going down. And that makes that the soil will respond in two different ways. It's responding by diffusion. It means it's just that the, the change in concentration tends to re-equilibrate itself. So uh, diffusion is wh whatever happens in any situation. Uh, um, but we also have that the solid phase contains a huge amount of nutrients absorbed in the solid phase. And then these nutrients that are absorbed in the solid phase, they can desorb, they can go into the solution. If the concentration in the solution goes down, the solid phase will resupply the solution. If the concentration in the solution goes up, the solid phase will absorb these nutrients. So this is how the solid phase is behaving as um, a storage of nutrients, yeah? a storage of nutrients, a reservoir of nutrients. And this system is not a passive system. It's not only responding like this, but it is, is responding uh, through the active uh, mechanisms of microbes and plants. So plants, they are not only taking the nutrients from the soil solution, but they are releasing things into the rhizosphere that really changes the dynamics of these nutrients. So it changes the, uh, the pH of the, the rhizosphere, changes the, uh, releases organic acids, enzymes that will mineralize organic molecules, uh, siderophores and surfactants that will uh, increase the solubility of these nutrients. And the microbes will have some of the same traits of plants, but not all, and um, uh, for certain different enzymes, more complex enzymes and more uh, a, a higher variety of enzymes and plants. And the main groups of microbes that are uh, uh, interfering in this are bacteria and mycorrhiza. mycorrhiza. We're going to have another lecture talking about the biology, how the biology of the soil affects the nutrient uptake by plants in different ways. Okay, so. Think of the root like a diffusive matrix in itself. You know, the cortex of the root, the nutrient needs to diffuse through the cortex of the root in order to be uptaken by uh, the, the, the root vessels and go 
to the rest of the plant tissues. So if you imagine that in the center of the roots, the concentration of this uh, nutrient, for example, now we are exemplifying this as phosphate, if the concentration is zero, and the root is uptaking this constantly, so making this concentration inside here, the, uh, uh, or in the, uh, in the interface between the solid solution in, that's diffusing through the cortex and the, 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 the membranes which have the phosphate transporters, uh, this concentration here is zero. Uh, there is a certain concentration outside the, the root. If you have no depletion, the concentration will be what the, the, the soil solution concentration was before. But because this is a dynamic system, the more you deplete the solution, the concentration near the surface of the root will be lower. So imagine this curve here as a curve of a dynamic uh, of uh, nutrient depletion on the rhizosphere. And as far away as you get from the root, you get more similar to what the soil solution was at the start. And as close to the root, you, will uh, you find this equilibrium concentration here on the uh, surface of the root, which is a function of two things. The rate on which the root is uh, taking these nutrients in and the rate in which these nutrients are being diffused and desorbed from the solid phase. So these two things are regulating this concentration here in the interface between the root and the soil. And this distance here is um, the zone of influence of the root in the rhizosphere. This distance here where you, you see the nutrient depletion is the zone of influence of the root. So uh, while I was in UK, uh, I had a, 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 a good cooperation and uh, was placed on a research group uh, together with a, a very brilliant researcher, uh, uh, Professor Hao Zhang in Lancaster, and she uh, is, was leading this uh, use of these methods called DGT, Diffusive Gradient in Thin Films. Uh, and this DGT is emulating the system of the root. Yeah? As the root is depleting the, solid the solution and the solid phase is resupplying the solution, the DGT is doing the same thing. DGT has uh, a, a phosphorus sink or a, a something that will absorb the nutrients strongly. You have a diffusive layer and then you can uh, prepare this in case of phosphorus is an iron oxide gel and um, you deploy these DGT devices across, uh, in, in the soil sample and it will emulate what the root is doing. It will take the nutrient from the solution but at the same time the, 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 sol the solid phase and the diffusion will be happening uh, dynamically uh, through, during this deployment. So this is a very interesting method and we are going to talk about how much information can we get from uh, nutrient dynamics by, by using this type of methods, yeah? by using this type of methods. If we look at the, 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 the plant side or the DGT side, you have that all the mass that is taken from the soil that is accumulated on the plant or in the, the binding layer of the DGT. Uh, if you divide that mass by the area and also by the, the um, by time, you will get a flux. Yeah, you will, you know, the mass eight dimensional uh, uh, will uh, will be. Um, over time is the flux. The flux is the speed in which this uh, nutrient is moving from the solution into the, the plant or the DGT in this case. Yeah? And uh, uh, you have this uh, CA being the concentration outside uh, the, the, the root or the concentration outside the DGT device. Uh, you, can, you can also uh, calculate it by combining these two equations, the fixed law of diffusion and the diffusion uh, obtained by the dividing the mass by the time. So you have fixed law of diffusion where, uh, where you have a diffusive coefficient uh, multiplying the gradient of concentration or the difference in concentration over distance. If you combine these two equations, these are all representing flux, you will end up with this formula which tells you what is the uh, concentration outside the DGT device or the root. 
if you divide this concentration outside by the concentration on the soil solution, you get a ratio. Yeah, it means that this ratio is measuring uh, uh, many things integrated: the bioavailability of the nutrient and also the, the, uh, how quick it is being resupplied from the solid phase and being diffused through this system. So let's say if this R value is 0.1, it means that the concentration on the surface of the root is 10% of the concentration uh, on the soil solution far away from the root. If this is 0.5, it means it's, zero, uh, it's 50%. You know, the, the higher this number is, it means the resupply is quicker. The lower the number this number is, it means the resupply from the soil phase is slower. Yeah? So the R is representing uh, this bioavailability uh, in the resupply from the solid phase. Um, so the, 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 the other thing you can do is once you know this ratio uh, and you have other parameters from the soil, from, uh, as you say, the solution concentration and how much nutrient you have on the solid phase, then you can run uh, a model, yeah. You can run a model to uh, understand the, the the dynamics of this system, yeah. The, the dynamics of this system. And what you saw this model to is for equilibration time, yeah. The time that it takes for the system to, if you if you uh, stop depleting, how much time that it takes for this uh, solid phase to re-equilibrate the solution to what it was before. Um, so this re-equilibration time is uh, a function of the sorption and desorption kinetics uh, on this system. Yeah? Sorption and desorption kinetics. So this is the rate constant of sorption and the rate constant of desorption is what is regulating this uh, speed of movement between what is on the solid phase and in uh, the solution phase. And diffusion, the diffusion co coefficient here, the uh, component, uh, is only um, uh, a, a, is a function of the, the tortuosity of this system. Yeah, the tortuosity means how bigger the pathway is the 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 sol uh, the solute must make on uh, on the soil matrix in comparison to uh, what is the pathway that it would do in water uh, in comparison to a straight line. Yeah. The, 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 in the soil, the pathway of the solute will have to go through the particles and uh, through the air pockets. And so this tortuosity is telling you this, uh, how long is this pathway. And this tortuosity is a function, of course, of porosity of the soil. So these are some of the relationships you get when you start studying like this. Uh, uh, um, as you deploy the DGT, you have that the R value goes up in time and then it stabilizes in a steady state uh, condition. Uh, and this steady state condition is what we, the final R value uh, or uh, uh, ratio is what we consider a, a measurement of uh, a, the dynamic resupply from uh, the solid phase in the system. Yeah? And if you plot this R value against CDGT, you have this, uh, this function also, this, uh, uh, which uh, it's, uh, uh, it's like a, um, uh, it's a plateau, plateauing uh, uh, function, yeah? like a Gaussian model. Um, the equilibration time uh, is also uh, uh, inversely proportional to the resupply from the solid phase and also the, the resupply from solid phase is di directly proportional to the desorption rate on this system, yeah, the desorption rate. So you can use this uh, uh, information that you can uh, understand this kinetics on, on the rhizosphere through these methods you can use this to uh, now uh, have some treatments on the system. So we have we did some work uh, uh, incubating the soils with organic acids and then uh, evaluating how these organic acids were affecting this interchange between the soil solution 
and the solid phase. So these kinetics were uh, highly affected by the release of organic acids on the system. And, and the conceptual model is the plants are taken from soil solution and releasing organic acids on the system. At the same time, you have the soil uh, be, uh, being affected by the organic acids, increasing the desorption. But at the same time, these organic acids are being degraded by the microbes, which are uptaking phosphorus and releasing phosphorus from, from the system. So there is a complex interaction between many uh, components on the system. There's the plants, there's the microbes, and you have the soil matrix. Yeah? And that is all interfaced by the soil solution on the rhizosphere. Yeah? On the rhizosphere. And what we measure is that we the, the 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 more you release organic acids, of course the you have more release of phosphate. Uh, and this uh, curiously, uh, we can understand now that the, the it, as you do this, the com the contribution from the solid phase becomes smaller, and the contribution from uh, diffusion becomes higher because. The effect of uh, sh the shifting the phosphorus from the solid phase into the solution is near immediate. And then uh, the, 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 the phosphorus that is already on the solution will uh, diffuse in, rather than dissolve during the, 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 the course of the, the, the experiment. Yeah? So you have an increase in, in, the, in, the, in the phosphorus uh, uh, concentration. Uh, but this phosphorus, uh, the availability of phosphorus, uh, it's coming later more from diffusion mechanism than the desorption mechanism on this system. Yeah? And then this varies also uh, with different organic acids and f with the dose of organic acid used. Yeah? Here in the bottom, each, each column is one different dose of organic acid. And um, these are two different soils, the top one is a low, uh, low phosphorus soil, and the bottom one is a high phosphorus soil. Um, so uh, these are uh, uh, some other relationships between the organic acid dose and what is happening with this dynamics. Uh, this is resupply from solid phases coming down with the increasing dose of organic acids. Um, uh, here on the right is the ratio between the solid phase and the solution is also going down. Uh, it means that, the, that this, this equilibrium is shifted towards the solution. When you have the organic acids on the system, the equilibrium is shifted towards the solution. The KD is the ratio between how much nutrient there is on the soil solution and in the solid phase. If you have a KD of 100, it means you have 100 folds the concentration on the solid phase than you have in the solution. So in our case, our KD in one soil started at 300, and the other case started at 150. Means that the solid phase is containing uh, 150 more uh, uh, the concentration of nutrients in with regards to the solution. But when you apply these organic acids with increasing doses, this KD is shifted. It means the nutrient will be more present in the solution than in the solid phase, or with regards to what it was before, yeah? KD is going down. And because KD is going down, then you have equilibration time going up. The, the, this, the, this kinetics that is happening here is a, a function of the difference in concentration, but also not only a function of difference in concentration, but the desorption, uh, uh, the rate constant of desorption. The so rate constant of desorption sur surprisingly goes down. Yeah? We didn't think that will happen. We thought that the rate constant of desorption will not go down, but it does. It means that we have a multiple system. The nutrient, the phosphorus in this case, is not uh, one single pool of, of phosphorus. The, the phosphorus that the, the more you release phosphorus, the phosphorus that is left on the uh, on the solid phase, it's more it's harder to desorb, yeah? it has lower desorption rate. They are retained with more energy. So it's a multi-pool system. You don't have one, one type of phosphate molecule absorbed, but actually they're absorbed at different energies. They're pools of different energy of absorption. 
And this, of course, is a function not only of because of the phosphate, but also a function of the different types of colloids and different types of uh, bonds that you generate on this system, yeah? the type of chemical bonds that you generate on this system. All right, so DT is the concentration on the, the, the soil solution and organic, uh, um, organic acid dose. So this is showing also how this is uh, going down either with citric or oxalic acids. In one soil, what is man completely maintained stable, but in the other, not. Yeah, in the other, not. And here, this, these graphics, uh, I will not spend too much time on this. This is uh, showing about the, the microbes, yeah? the, microbe, the microbial response on the system. Uh, we have that the biomass uh, of the microbes is going up with the, with the addition of organic acids. And then it goes down afterwards. It means that the microbes are highly stimulated by the organic acids, but only at low doses. If the plant exudates too much, it means these microbes will not respond. Yeah? They only respond at low doses. So this is an interesting system. This is respiration here on the bottom, uh, going up and then stabilizing again. So all this is a, a, a very interesting uh, observation about the kinetics uh, uh, or the dynamic system, how the microbes are being differentially affected at different rates of exudation of organic acids. Yeah? And, how, and now we are looking at the effective uh, dose of organic acids. We, we need to think about the organic acids now. Microbes are respirating the organic acids. It means that you, the plant releases organic acids on the system. The microbes are eating these organic acids. So we only expect to see a chemical effect of these organic acids when they are exudated in, the, uh, in an enough amount that the, plant, the microbes will not degrade them fully. So they're still in solution that they can affect the chemistry between the, the, the colloids and the solution phase. If they're not in the solution because the microbes eat them up, uh, uh, respirate them, then they, they will not, they will, it will not be possible for them to have any chemo, chemical effect on the system. So what we see is that for uh, uh, the, the oxalic acid, uh, two, uh, um, two milligrams per kilogram, millimoles per kilogram you know, of, of uh, exudation is the threshold. Over two you start having a chemical effect on the system. Below two, it's only food for the microbes. For the citric acid, it is uh, somewhat between 0 0.5 and 1 um, millimoles per kilogram that of exudation. That will uh, uh, be the threshold for having a chemical effect on the soil. Below that, it will only have uh, uh, a, a, a microbial stimulation effect. And of course the microbes will do something on the, on the system and it will affect the system, but there will be, the, the plants will have an indirect effect on this kinetics by stimulating the microbes and the microbes then will affect the system in that way. Um, this is another work we did that we are evaluating the, this, uh, the R value uh, over time, measured experimentally, not only calculated through the model. And then you can use now this to solve both uh, KD and TC simultaneously. So the, the equilibration time and the ratio between so, uh, solid to solution phase can be solved simultaneously uh, if you have uh, these measurements over time. And, but I will not go in detail over this. This is the paper we published last, last year with Niklas Leto. Um, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, uh, if you are interested in, in this uh, modeling of this uh, kinetics of absorption desorption in soil, this is an interesting paper to look at. Uh, anyway, uh, so this, uh, this is showing here uh, how this, the, use, using this uh, uh, dynamic uh, measurement, experimentally measuring the R values over time, we can now calculate what is uh, the relationship between the, the different soil parameters 
and the 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 desorption kinetics and the, the uh, labile phosphors and and uh, the, in order to see which parameters from the soil are really affecting this desorption or not. Yeah. So this this uh, uh, um, correlation analysis is not a. Uh, uh, um, not really, really great for for uh, as an evidence, but uh, uh, anyway, this is this is uh, the high correlation shows at least they are they are uh, uh, affected by the same conditions. Yeah, affected by the same conditions. Uh, here on the right, this is a regression of of uh, trying to predict uh, the 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 lay biophosphors using different. Phosphorus extracts, yeah, it's different phosphorus extracts, and the the better predictor was uh, the NaOH EDTA, but the 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 ones that were in the real scale more closely were the water extracts. So water extracts proved to be um, the 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 closest to reality and absolute values. The closest to reality and absolute values. We can also use this type of methods to image the rhizosphere. Yeah? How do we do these images of the rhizosphere? We uh, deploy these gels against the root system, and then we uh, then use some ICPMS with uh, uh, laser ablation to uh, quantify how much phosphorus was accumulated in different parts of the gel. So this is what we see here. This here is marked where the, where the roots were. Uh, on the gels, and the the one on the left here is a is a, a tobacco plant, which exudates a, a phytase enzyme. The run the one on the middle are just uh, the native tobacco plants, and the one here on the right is the to the tobacco plants we are which are transformed to exudate citric acid citrate. So you see that the one that exudates citrates. Have much higher values of phosphorus mobilization. Uh, um, so here is the CDGT, the concentration on the surface of the root, uh, when uh, in, 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 the, the, in the surface of the DGT device, as a distance from the root. Yeah? And then you have, here is the maximum zone of depletion, and here is three millimeters is about the length of or two between two and three millimeters is the, 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 the zone of influence of this root, the zone of influence of this root on the soil. When we add the organic acid on the system, the citrate, the mobilization of phosphorus is much higher for a start. And uh, we, we see that this zone of depletion, uh, it's more limited to two millimeters, yeah, two millimeters on this system. So we can now see this dynamic of where, how much is the, the depletion of phosphorus and mobilization of phosphorus on the rhizosphere and how, how far away from the root is it, it's able to affect uh, this system. Yeah? Now we can, we can use this also, this type of methodology is the DGT to uh, use it directly as a measurement of bioavailability to plants, yeah, and then we see that the, it has a very good relationship. The CDGT, the higher the CDGT, uh, we have more uh, uh, yields. From from this case is um, wheat, and there in this threshold of 95 percent, 90 percent is the CDGT that represents that the the, the, the phosphorus is completely bioavailable. Over this CDGT value, you will have that you don't need to apply phosphorus anymore. The plants will have enough. Below this CDGT value, you will uh, uh, you will have uh, not enough phosphorus, and you need to apply fertilizer. So this is the, the DGT proved to be a very good predictor of plant uh, phosphor uptake uh, across different soils. Whereas if you use uh, um, other other uh, methods, uh, it will not be as good as it works really well. For example, with OSNP, if you're working within the same soil, but if you are uh, um, if you are in, um, <coughs> in across different soils, the CDGT is a much better predictor. Yeah, the CDGT is a much better predictor. 
So, moreover, is the the what we need to consider in this is bioavailability is highly affected by this this complex kinetically dynamic system. So the things are very in time. Plants are depleting. At the same time, the solid phase is resupplying, diffusion is happening, microbes are uh, fixing some of these nutrients, releasing some of these nutrients. Uh, the exudation of these uh, 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 effectors of the system are occurring in different rates in time. So all this complexity is what controls how much nutrient the plants are uptaking. Uh, we use phosphorus here as a, 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 an example, but any other nutrient that has a strong interaction with the solid phase, that will be conditioned similarly uh, uh, by the roots. So, doing uh, the, the rhizosphere research is a is a is a inter, is completely on in the interface between plant physiology, uh, uh, micro, microbiology of the rhizosphere in the soil chemistry that is occurring on the rhizosphere. So this is in a nutshell, just giving you some examples about how you should uh, interpret and uh, observe the rhizosphere as uh, a, com com a complex dynamic system that is uh, in all its complexi complexity, soil properties, microbial community present, uh, uh, plant physiology, all together, they're conditioning what is the dynamic of nutrient uptake by plants as, as a whole. Um, so, all right, this is what I have uh, to bring for you today, and I hope you enjoyed. We, uh, in the next presential class, we can answer questions and discuss this a, a little bit further. Thank you very much.